Welcome back to the Look Up Pod. This is your host, Roman Downing. And Alani, we are excited to be with you back here for episode eight. And I hope you guys had a really great Easter weekend and a great day, a great morning or evening or whatever time you're listening to this. We're excited. We're excited to come talk to you today. And we have a lot of good stuff to share that's just kind of been on our hearts. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen. We had a good time. We uh, went to our church and um, they had a really, really cool service. And it was actually, um, now that I'm thinking service. about it, it was very like, what is that called? Like Impactful. tear, tear emotional. wrenching, emotional. Let's just say that it was emotional. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say like gut wrenching, but it wasn't gut wrenching, but like something that makes you cry. Anyway, sentimental. Yeah. It was just emotional because it shared a lot of like, people's stories from before they found Christ to after, or maybe they were in a relationship with Christ and what Christ has been able to do in their life because of traumatic experiences right. or bad decisions or mistakes or um, catastrophes in their life. And so it was really emotional, really, really good. And I do think it's just it's so important to remember like the goodness that God has brought to us through Jesus Christ is that he can heal us. He can work through us. He can, Um, he can just comfort us, you know, like when I think of all of those different scenarios, they shared, like, I think it was four different individuals and like what they went through and right. right? And then like after Christ, like they were first broken and now they're healed. And it's just like all this labels that we've put on our life from before of like, I'm not enough, but now through Christ, I am enough. Or I am addicted. I was an addict, you know, an addict. And now I am, you know, um, I'm healed from it. And right. it's just like all of these things. I think it was just a really great reminder. This is this past Easter weekend right. of that despite, the power yeah. of, of God, despite the names that you give yourself. Right. He knows your real name. Exactly. Right. So it was just so good. It was great. Hope you guys had a great Easter. Absolutely. We My ate some good food too. Joan was <laughs> up there. Joan's story is amazing. I just want to share about that a little bit. Um, Because I think that's it's very impactful. Um, Her son was actually riding his bike home from work and um, he got hit by a car and it actually severed his spine. And it was a hit and run. It was a hit and run. So they don't even know who did it still Mm -hmm. to this day. Um, And it severed his spine and left him paralyzed, like completely severed. Mm -hmm. There's not not a single nerve that's attaching the upper part of his body to the lower part of his body. And Joan remembers going into the hospital and, you know, they were like, your son will probably never walk ever again. Right. And then she talked to her son and her son asked her, mom, do you, do you believe that God will help me? And Joan was like, I do. And he said, all right, I'm going to walk one day. Wow. That and power of faith right there. That yeah. is faith. And you won't even believe it. And all these stories we hear about all the time. Miracles. And what God does mm-hmm. and the miracles that he that he, he performs. He walked, I think it was maybe two or three months ago. Wow. Took his first step. How long was that healing process? I think it was the beginning of the pandemic. So two years. Wow. I think maybe a year See, and a half, See, it's years. just so amazing. The power of God. It's just like all you can do is literally just stand in awe in all of his glory and what he can do and what he has done, what he's still doing. Like we hear about all these miracles that happen in the Bible, but it's like he's not finished. He's not done. He's still working. (laughs) And you know what? That just kind of reminds me of what we're going to talk about today of really enjoying the life that God blessed us with because he's constantly doing a work in us. So that we can live in peace and joy and comfort. And, you know, like what we were talking about, that new name or true name that we are not depressed. We are filled with joy. I am not anxious. I am excited for the next steps in life and what God's going to do through me. I am not um, I don't have social anxiety. I'm not afraid to talk with people. I'm comforted by the community. I love being around others. And it's like that new name. It's like and I think through that we can really, truly enjoy the life that God has blessed us with. Right. He didn't create us. And I think that's where a lot of non-believers tend to not believe in God. It's like, well, if God is all of this 
gung ho happiness. Why am I, why do I feel all these sad things? And it's like, he didn't build this earth. He didn't create these, our lives for us to feel these, these things for us to go through that sin caused that. But that doesn't mean that he's still not out here trying to help us heal through, you know, our transgressions, our sins that we will do. And I mean, no matter how hard I try, I still sometimes slip out a white lie or you don't know why you just, you're, we're sinners. We're born sinners, but that doesn't mean that we have to stay in this place of despair. Right. In the name of Easter, um, you know, uh, I think it's, I've quoted this a bunch of times. I probably should know it, but John 19, 29, I think 30. that's what it is. 30. I don't know it is finished. It. it is finished. Yeah. But a lot of people look at that and they don't realize that they think it's finished. Like, well, if it was truly finished, why is there still wars? Why is there no peace? Yeah. Why, why did people, this person, this you know good I mean? person get cancer? Right. Or why did a child die? It's like, right. you know, Yeah, Yes, all this stuff, but the word, the, the 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 phrase it is finished in hebrew translated in hebrew doesn't mean what it means in english it means debt paid mm-hmm. right like what we were talking about last week it doesn't mean that oh right. it's finished it's over like oh no right. nothing bad will ever happen again i think that that can sometimes be a misinterpreted translation mm-hmm. but the translation in hebrew literally means it it's referring to like if there was a tax collector or a debtor or something like that, they mm-hmm. would literally stamp that word that he said in Hebrew on whatever documentation or whatever saying that, Oh, like you're good. Like you don't owe us anything. Right. Else. Yeah. Like we talked about um, right. last week's podcast. If right. you haven't listened, it's really good. We go really more into depth right. about that. So even though it's, it is finished is what I'm, I'm getting at. Even though it is finished, God's not finished. Exactly. You know what I mean? He's not done. Exactly. So, yeah, uh, and I think you have to live your life and enjoy your life for him to continue to, to to bless you. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I think actually, like, he's always blessing you, but you choosing to live and enjoy, and, and enjoy your life, you, I think mm-hmm. you'll be more aware of all the blessings that he's already blessed you with. You right. know, instead of being so focused on societal standards of I have to be successful so I can't enjoy my life, or I have a lot of crap going on so I can't be happy, or... or Not even that. Maybe you just feel really humble. So-and-so is going through stuff. So I feel like I can't be happy. But I think in in reality, um, you will actually tend to notice God's blessings more if you're actually just walking out and living your life and enjoying it, choosing to enjoy it. Because, I mean, I think all emotions, yes, they're indicators, but you can also choose, choose to have joy in your life and choose to have love in your life. And I think when you do that gratitude that overwhelms you, you'll start to realize, wow, look at what God is already doing and is, has done, and you know, and has been doing right. And that's been there outside of my city. Yeah. You know, outside of my country this whole time, look at how he sculpted these mountains. Look at how he painted this beach. Look at how, you know what I mean? All of these things exactly. that we don't even get to see that most people will never see mm-hmm. because they choose not to. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And God's just like, dang, man, I wish you could have saw what I put together in Australia. But you so caught up in the world. You so caught up on Instagram. You so caught up on what your mom thinks or what your dad thinks or what your friends think. Or what you think is like a societal norm. You won't even get to see what I what I created on this earth when I before I call you home. Yeah. And I think a lot of that, too, um, you can see the amazing wonders that God has literally built. But I think you can also find that where you currently are at with the people that are around you when you, um, cause I was just talking about this before, but in my book that I started with Hosanna Wong, um, how not to save the world. She was basically just sharing how the book is basically about how you don't have to do something big to have significance and impact or to feel significance and impact True. in your own life. Um, because she was talking about the story of, Jesus. She brought up Jesus a lot. And obviously, and she's <laughs> sharing the certain parts of his life where, um, how he lived was really, he just always, always with other people and enjoying his life with other people. And she was talking about, 
I don't remember the exact quote specifically, but she's like, if there's one thing that we can learn of how Jesus lived was that he ate a lot of good food. He sat at tables with a lot of friends. He laughed a lot. He made a lot of memories with all those around him on his time here on earth. And I think that just is so beautiful. Like that picture that just shows, wow, that's really like what we were called for. I mean, if you think of, I think I brought this up last week in the beginning when God created Adam or the first man on earth, he did that so he can just enjoy the relationship in the company. And the only reason he made Eve was because Adam was lonely. And so he made another person to come on this earth to make more memories with and laugh with and enjoy and, and look at all the beautiful things that he's created. And I think that it gets so twisted when society kind of comes into the mix and makes you think that you're you not supposed you to earn that. Yeah. You're not supposed to enjoy anything and you start right. living in this. I mean, when it comes to success, cause it's I know like we're, she, it's like what she said in the book though. Right. Most people try to, they, they it's all off of performance, performance results, results and performance mm -hmm. based grace. Yes. Results and performance based blessings. Uh huh. Right. Like you think you'll only get all that from God or you'll only get all that from your family and friends around you if you perform or if you get the quote unquote results that you think you're supposed to have. And then you can take the trip. Yeah. I remember because I was about to bring up the point, like when it comes to the idea of success, there's that that um, term delayed gratification. Right. And it's something that we've learned so much right. about. Right. <laughs> and I was listening to the Secret to Success podcast, which I love. Yep. Not sponsored by them at all, but Shout I love ET. them. <laughs> I love them I'm so much. I think now. we've we're gonna we're gonna we, get on Secret to Success. We've brought up their podcast, I think, since episode one because right. I listen to it. I'm not kidding. Every week, I wait for it every Thursday. So, anyways, Jamal, okay, he was talking about sacrifice, and he was saying that in the idea of success, a lot of people think, well, I got to sacrifice to become successful. And he was talking about he's like, when I was making thirty thousand dollars a year working as a cop before I was a millionaire, he's like. I was still taking trips with my wife. I was still going out on these beautiful vacations. Yeah, we were we were going to the same destinations, like the Bahamas, whatever he started naming places they went. He's like, but we weren't staying in the nice villas. He's like, but we went anyways. He's like, because the point is of life isn't just to like save up and put all this money away and do nothing with it, right? The point is to go out and enjoy it and live your life because also too, you never know when, like you were brought up in the beginning of this podcast, you never know when your last day is, your days are numbered. Does that mean to act a complete fool and quote unquote YOLO. No, but that means to just enjoy your life and not feel like you're always putting things on the back burner. And he shared these stories of people that he's personally coached who make hundreds of thousands of dollars. They did it like the quote unquote society they did it the right way, right way. They like saved a lot of money, put six figures in the bank. Um, they worked really successful jobs, like made tons of money. But they're now in their 60s and are like, well, what do we do now? Like, we want to do stuff now. Like, what do you think we should do? And he's like, like, oh, that's so sad. Like, I don't want to live like that of just pushing finally, things away. Yeah, you're finally living your you're life. You're literally living your life based off of what the dollar is telling you how to live your life. You're living yep. your life based off of money. You're putting your joy on hold for, because of money. And it's just then you start serving. And I think that's why when I was telling you the other day of why I understand why Jesus said it's hard for a rich man to get into heaven is because they live their whole life literally worshiping money, even though they say they don't. They do. They make every decision there. They put all their faith in what money does for them or can do for them in the future. Yep. You're Actions putting your entire future words. on a dollar yep. on literally. What do we call this? A social construct. We yep. talk about this at home like that. <laughs> it's true. Ever since, because I say this all the time, ever since the dollar got off the gold standard, I think it was in 2009. I might be wrong. Um, or Probably before. Yeah, something like that. Um, ever since the, the dollar got off the gold standard, it is a figment of our imagination. And I don't think people really understand what that even means. Like money, at least in the U.S., because it's not backed by anything fi uh, physical anymore. Mm -hmm. Before, a certain amount of dollars equaled one bar of gold. Right, right. right? Mm -hmm. So it was the gold standard. That money was actually a representation of something solid gold. Mm -hmm. It's not anymore. So what is it based off of? Our what belief. you tell it, it's based off of. It's all on whether we believe it's worth because something someone or not. said it's worth this. Now we all believe, okay, it's worth it's that. worth it. So, but when, but but we all know that there's only a finite amount of gold in the world, so you can only print a finite amount of money. Right, but, but it's being printed it's not, like no other. Exactly. 
So now that it's not on the gold standard, they can print as much as they want. So why are you tripping on how much how much of it that you make when it's being made every day? Yeah. Why are you why are or you Or making your entire life spending? basing right. all of your life's decisions, your future, your current right. life right. on on something that's so literally So really honestly that's, insignificant. That's abundant. Yeah. That's abundant. No. You're basing your entire life on something that's overtly abundant right now. Mhm. It's like saying, "Oh, I got to make sure I get all these rocks and they're everywhere." Mm-hmm. you just got to start scooping them yo like just start scooping them right and i think that's just living your life just so i don't even know how to like how to describe that it's like free minded. i think that's yeah. just living so much more free because yeah. you aren't controlled yeah. by what i think two two things you're not controlled by obviously money and you're not controlled by what society thinks because society i really as we you know they shape like we were talking about what the money worldview, even is yeah. the world view how important money is supposed to be in your life how you're supposed to have this much in your bank account at this age and you're supposed to put this much away every check right. and this says much, who you know what i mean and it's like then you're like you feel always so stressed and then you start comparing and i feel like comparison is ultimate like takes away all your happiness and joy that god blessed you with and um in my book too she was talking about that she's like if we can learn to just have real relationships with each other and meet people where they're at and have true friendships, I don't think we would have trouble with comparison. And I never thought of it that way because we're so used to thinking that people That's are true. quote unquote better than us. But we, if we really had true deep relationships, we wouldn't feel that they are better than us and we are now better than them. Right? Right. It's a lot. It's deep. I'm kind of just thinking a lot of other things, but. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. No, you know? I agree. 100%. Yeah, I think if we really got to know people and understood what they were going through and who they are and where they come from and their background and what their true thoughts are, of course not. Mm -hmm. Of course not. Mm -hmm. Because I think comparison is really a reflection of what you're thinking, honestly, is. Yeah. You never get get the other person's side when you're comparing. Mm -hmm. You never get how someone truly fe feels about this picture that they posted on Instagram or whatever you're comparing yourself with. Right. It's all off of you and your own thoughts and what you are assuming is going on in that other person's life. Mm. So if you actually got to know that person on a, gra uh, a, a, a roots level, a ground roots level, it's hard to compare to anybody because everyone's so unique. And it's also hard to have hate in your heart for anybody. Right. When you can, when you know someone so well. Yes. But also yeah. it's just so important to remember we were all created in his image. So therefore, if we are all created in his image, we all tend to experience the same things. We all have the same emotions. We all have dreams. We all have fears. We all have, you know, like things we love and things we don't love. It's like we all really are so much so the same. When you remember that God created all of us in his image, there's not a single human on his earth that's not created in his image. So True. if you know that we are all actually really so much so Similar. the same. Yeah. Yeah. But we're not. Mm-hmm. Every single one of us was made fearfully, wonderfully. Exactly. And uniquely. Mm-hmm. And obviously God is infinite. Mm -hmm. So there's an infinite amount of, you know, images he could have created, but you were, every single one of us is unique but every single one of us is made in his image, which I think is absolutely wonderful. Yep. So um, it's important. It's important to not get caught up in the world. and It's important not to get, you know, let society start forming who you are and how you think and the things that you want to do in your life, right? So, you know, if you're hearing this right now, um, I'm on the same page as you. Live your life. Mm-hmm. Enjoy it because... That's what we are called to do, I think. We are called to live together right. in community, worshiping God, right. enjoying the life that he's, you know, willed for all of us. Right. And uh, to double back on Jamal, I got that thought back. But to double, double back on Jamal, he's really big on exposure, right? Mm -hmm. um, exposure is a, is a very important thing because if you never take the, like, well, I don't want to take the trip until I can, I'm not doing Hawaii until I go to the villa. Or I'm not doing uh, uh, Dubai until I can stay in the five-star hotel. But if you never expose yourself to those things, that it's available, that you can look up at the tower and see the the, the five-star resort, 
or you can go to Hawaii and see the villa, it's a different level. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. And God wants you to see it first because if you can see it with your eyes, you can see it in your mind and you can hold it in your hands. Yep. Right? So I think that's important, man. Mm-hmm. That is so good. Did you have something that you wanted to share? I saw that you were. No, I was just looking up the verse. It was in Psalms. It just says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. I just wanted yeah. to know if it said uniquely. Oh, fearfully and wonderfully. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fearfully mm-hmm. and wonderfully made. Um, he even knows the hairs on our heads. Yep. Not every single one of us have the same amount of hair on our head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. So um, I think it's really good just knowing that you are very important. You are one of one. Mm-hmm. And uh, that you matter and what you do does matter on a daily basis. And uh, I think it's time for Christians to start showing out, man. It's time for Christians to step up. I think it's very easy for us to kind of step back into the shadows and not want to be judged, especially for our religion. But there's more of us out there than it is of any other religion. Mm-hmm. We're the largest re- religion in the entire world. But I think more of us need to step up and represent God. Mike Todd calls it represent God Mm -hmm. because he doesn't need representation. He just needs to be represented to the world. And um, I think if there's if we could build a community of of Christians that are doing that. Right. And I think that's like the power of having church and and having that community. Yeah. Um, Just to know that, yeah, you are all together working towards that right. relationship with God, that's it. And bringing right. more people to have that relationship with God. Cause we obviously know how that works in our own life right? and what that can do for them in their life. And exactly like what the book I'm reading is talking about, you know, the whole idea, I guess, of like evangelism, it starts with that friendship first. She says, um, not all of these friendships you have, well, obviously like the, all of a sudden, you know, because you're friends with them, now they're going to come to church with you every weekend. She said, but imagine all of those times where Jesus sat down with these tax collectors and these sinners and how many of them, it doesn't say exactly, but how many of them decided not to follow him and not to go right. through it. But, but how many did decide to follow him through that friendship and that relationship? He's like, God came down through Jesus and he heard other people he listened to them he communicated with them and how can we expect others to do that to god of and you know but we're not even willing to do that either how can we expect that jesus could do that but i can't do that either and we're called to live the way that jesus lived to follow and and pr- practice and teach what how he practiced and teach you know the word of god and if he's out here listening to people and being with them and enjoying life and eating good food and doing all those things in community, we're called to do the same thing and not be so isolated. And I think that's where a lot of religions can get judged or let's just say can get viewed in the light that they are judgmental and they are stuck up and they are better than everyone else because you start putting yourself on this high horse. Like I'm religious, like a lot of the religious leaders were and they didn't like that Jesus was hanging out with a tax collector and sinners. But that's where, I mean, I can get guilty of that too. I'm like, oh my gosh, you are like a crazy person. I can't be around you. But I think living that way really cuts off the work that God's trying to do through you, through to that person. You know what I mean? Dude, I mean, how many times do we drive past like a dangerous area and lock the door? Yeah. You know, so... If God uh, was around in today, he would not be where you think he would be. He wouldn't be at church. <laughs> there was this um, sermon I watched with Mike Todd and like the background was like a trap house. <laughs> and he was he was telling that story of how um, that one man was lifted up and like thrown down from the roof, you know, uh-huh. on the mat who was paralyzed. And then he said, this is the house they pulled up to. And he's, and it was a trap house. And they were like, he's like, Oh, you thought Jesus would be at this really nice neighborhood. Nope. And I'm like, no, he wasn't though. He wasn't. He wasn't. <laughs> Shoot. He might already be back, <laughs> but we just don't know that he might be in a trap. And he Atlanta said, you, he said, you'll know, <laughs> you'll know. Maybe he not telling us just yet. He might be in a trap in Atlanta or something. Read the book of revelations. It's a yeah. good one. Go back over it. One hundred percent. No, but when I'm what I, the point that I'm trying to make is is that most of us sit up in our our nice homes, and our nice cars, and we give every Sunday, and we give to the church, and you know we got hope for the city and all these other initiatives that we have in Las Vegas. But when's the last time you went down there? 
When's the last time you went to MLK or you went to D Street? You know what I mean? And you prayed over somebody or for somebody. I mean, you barely want to look at people that are on the side of the road, you know, with signs in their hands asking for things. Mm-hmm. And that, also, so. too, you just have to remember, it's like, I think people will hear that and start to be like, well, I'm not doing enough as a Christian. And the book that I'm basically saying is, again, it's not about going big or going home. It's doing what you can no. right where you are at. You no. know, so there's different ty- there's different levels to being a Christian. And this is what I'm learning in school. You can be a Christian. Grace is for everybody. But to be a disciple, that's a different level. Mm -hmm. And it's a quote that I say all the time. Foxes have dens. Birds have nests. But the Son of Man has no place to rest his head. If you want to follow him, it's going to be a hard road, buddy. Yep. You're not going to have very many places to sleep. You're going to be on the road all the time. That's what the the disciples chose. And. They lived a pretty cool life, a fulfilled life, that's for sure. Um, But grace is for everybody. You could be a Christian. You can go to church. You can do all that stuff. But, you know, if you want to be a disciple, you got to go and put in that work. Yep. And a lot of the times, yes, it's the person right next to you, like what what Hosanna is talking about. But she was on the road Mm -hmm. and been on the road working. Yep. Preaching to five people, four people, three people, two people, one person. You know what I mean? So that's all I'm, I'm, I was trying to say on that. But I think there's power in just living your life and enjoying your life and not letting the world shape who you are and how you think and all that stuff. And take that trip now is what I'm trying to say. And enjoy your life now. Um, choose happiness in your life now. Um, those are some of the things that I've just been trying to undertake recently because I've gone through – a few years of not doing that yep so so yeah enjoy your life and of course we end every episode on psalms 121 verse 1 through 2 where our name the look up pod came from and you know when i lift my eyes up to the mountain where does my help come from my help comes from the lord the maker of heaven and earth so thank you guys for listening to Mm -hmm. this episode if you haven't, follow us on Instagram and TikTok at the Look Up Pod on YouTube. Comment, like, share, subscribe. It all really helps. Review. We appreciate all of you who do listen. Um, it really does mean a lot. Absolutely. Let us know what your thoughts is on this episode. Leave us a review. Yes, we'd love to hear. So Throw something in the comment section on any of those platforms. Yeah, we'd appreciate it. But thank you, guys. Absolutely. We will see you next week. And I hope you have a great rest of your week this week. Peace.